Hey guys, it's Kyle, the Lawn Mentor here. Thanks for tuning in today. Well, it might seem like it's a little late in the season to talk about a tuna can challenge, but I think you're wrong. With overseeding and for some people, renovations right around the corner, making sure that you have your water dialed in is absolutely imperative when it comes to planting new seed and trying to have some success. So let's talk about how to make sure that you're putting down the right amount of water for your new lawn that's coming up this fall. What most people refer to here on YouTube as the tuna can challenge is actually just referring referring to a process by which you're measuring the amount of water that goes down on your lawn via your sprinkler system to ensure that you're putting the right amount of water on your lawn you're not over and you're not under. Ideally, you wanna get around an inch to an inch and a half of water on your lawn per week with about two, maybe three watering cycles that each put down about a half inch of water. If you'd like some more information on how to make sure that you're watering your lawn correctly, I'll go ahead and put a bubble up here to uh, link you to another one of my videos where I exclusively talk about how to water your lawn. Now, this kind of process doesn't just have to be done at the beginning of the season, and in fact, if you You've made changes to your sprinkler system like I have, you might want to conduct one of these tests or tuna can challenges to make sure that you know exactly how much water is going down on your lawn. And this gets really important when it comes to overseeding and renovations and seeding a lawn. You want to make sure that you're not only keeping the seed wet, but you're not washing it away. And on top of that, once that grass seed germinates, you want to be sure that you can back off your water properly and prompt those roots to grow down deep and chase that water with deep and infrequent watering cycles. The reason why most people call it a tuna can is because of the shape of a tuna can. You have a cylinder with a flat bottom that gives you a pretty even distribution in a small section of area for measuring water that falls in your lawn. They also make rain gauges that you can buy, which I purchased, that you can scatter throughout your yard and put in the way of one of your sprinklers and then run your sprinkler and after a certain amount of time, measure how much water is is in that rain gauge or that tuna can. Like I said, we're aiming for about a half inch of water to see how long does it take to get one half inch of water down on the lawn. Usually, if you run your sprinkler for about 15 minutes and then you measure how much water is in your tuna cans or your rain gauges after that time, you can do some simple math to figure out how much time you'd have to leave that sprinkler on to attain half an inch. So for instance, if you run your sprinkler for 15 minutes, you check your rain gauge and you have a quarter inch of water in there, you know that you need to run it for a full half hour to get that half inch. I've scattered my rain gauges throughout the yard and now we're going to go ahead and kick on one of the sprinklers and let that run for 15 minutes and then measure how much water has fallen. Depending on how your yard is sloped, depending on how your sprinkler runs, you might find that one particular area that the sprinkler is covering gets a little bit less water than say say immediately in front of it or on the other side of the sprinkler's path. So you'll have to keep that in mind and make sure that you run the sprinkler long enough so that all three of your cans or your rain gauges average out to around and a half inch of water on the ground. So I've scattered the rain gauges throughout the yard. You can see that there's one right there, there's one over there, and then there's one down on the hill. If you use multiple rain gauges like this, it'll help you to get a better uh, reading of the whole area that the sprinkler's coming and making sure that you're getting an uh, even amount of water across the whole thing. So this first one here has, uh, geez, just about a tenth of an inch of water in here, if that. Second one here, and again, right around a tenth of an inch of water. Last but not least, the one that was on the hill, again, is about a tenth of an inch of water. So that way, now we know how much water this sprinkler puts out in 15 minutes, which is about a tenth of an inch. So that means if this sprinkler was the only one covering this area, that we would need five times our runtime to get half an inch. Since we had one tenth, we need half, we need five times that. So that means we need 75 minutes of runtime to put out half an inch of water. Effectively, the way that my sprinklers are set up, I have three sprinklers that are each on their own zone and they all overlap. And so I would have to take into account the other sprinkler that covers this section of lawn, let it run for 15 minutes and see how much water it puts down. You can repeat this process over and over again and you can actually draw yourself out a property map if you want to lay out where your sprinklers are at and put the 
rate. Like for instance, that one on the corner here is 15 minutes equals a 10th of an inch of water in the area that it covered. Then I can measure the second one, run it for 15 minutes and add the two up and see how long I need to put them both on to get my half inch of water. It's really not much more complicated than that guys. I'm not sure why a lot of people don't do this, but making sure you're getting the right amount of water down on the lawn is critical for ensuring the health of your turf. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up, get the rest of my sprinklers running and measure out their rates to make sure that I'm putting down the right amount of water and uh, keep track of it. With that, thanks for tuning in everybody. If you appreciate the content that I've been creating, I'd really appreciate it if you could uh, hit that like button and share this video with your friends if it's been helpful to you. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.